what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Gonna do a leak down test today on a four stroke dirt bike. So, um, what I'm aiming for is the last time I tested it, which was like a couple weeks ago, it was fine. And um, you know, I didn't really, I noticed a little bit of puff of uh, like bluish smoke when it would start up, but um, seems like ever since I put the voice and quick start, um, unit on there it just seems like uh, things have just been getting progressively worse and I don't think it was a boys and quick start I think it's just a coincidence um, the manual says the Honda service manual says to replace your piston every 20 hours I'm sure that's probably if you're you know hitting the limiter every day <laughs> but uh, either way I've been doing motocross this year ever since I did uh, ever since I installed the hour meter like you guys saw um, I have uh, over 22 hours on so you know, it's been harder riding for sure. Um, I didn't change the piston all last year. Uh, the guy that I got it from said that he put a new top end in it. And I don't even know if that's right or not. So um, either way, if he did, then I put all last year's hours on the piston. So, I mean, I could easily be double of what I got on there. 50 hours, 45, 50 hours easily. Um, I rode it ever since I got it fixed. I rode it all last summer. I hit the OLV park a couple times. Um, just I was trying to get on it every weekend for at least 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> so, yeah, I put quite a bit of time on it. Um, so I think I'm going to have to end up replacing the top end for sure. Either way, I'm going to do it because it's just I'm sure it needs it. I don't know how long I have on this piston. It's been going fine. I don't want to risk anything <laughs> more than I already have, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But like I said, first, I'm going to do a leak down test so stay tuned for that if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel first though hit the subscribe button and the alert bell so you can come on back check out what we got going on like i said i'm always doing something man. i just i keep busy you know i like to ride stuff but it's got to be fixed so pretty much what i do is fix the ride so i'm fixing a ride every pretty much every week so just so i can keep riding so but yeah um make sure to hit the like button as well smash that thing I always appreciate that. You guys are awesome. Keep on coming back, watching the videos. So, all right, let's get into it. Okay, so this is the leak down tester that I'm going to be using. This is a, uh, it's not Ferris, it's like uh, Furious or something like that. And um, it's got an actual percentage monitor instead of actual PSI. The other one I used was a Maddox, and I got that from Harbor Freight. And it had PSI on both sides. And before I tested it, it was like almost 85, 85 PSI. And it dropped down to, I think, 82 PSI. So I only had like three, uh, three PSI lost. So it seemed like the engine was real tight. But the thing is, is that, you know, I keep seeing puffs of smoke and the, the, uh, when I start it up. And if I start it up and just let it idle, it's fine. But if I rev it at all, um, I can see a little bit, and then if I bring the idle, if I bring the RPMs up just a hair, maybe to like you know from 2,000 to maybe 2,800, 3,000 for just like three or four seconds, I'll see a big, huge puff of smoke of blue smoke. So that's oil to me. So I don't know where it's coming from. I already took the bike for a ride, warmed it up, and uh, I'm getting ready. I took the seat off already. I pulled the crankcase uh, dipstick plug. And then I'm going to pull the tank, and then I'm gonna pull the spark plug, and then the side. What you wanna do is pull this crankcase plug here. That way you can get to the crankcase, or you can get to the, the crankshaft gear. And the gear has another one of these socket head um, spots in it. So you can hold the crank still when you pressurize it. So. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get this thing ready to go and then I'll hook up the leak down tester and then I'll show you how it's done. I mean, it's pretty simple, guys. All right, so I got the gas tank off. What I do is just unscrew the radiator bolt and then the bottom frame bolt for the shroud on both sides and then the top bolt up here and then the bolt that holds in the fuel tank valve and then pop this little retainer um, cord off and the whole thing pops out you don't have to mess around with the the shrouds or anything like that they stay on the tank so um, I have the spark plug coil out and then what you want to do is you want to 
try and blow into this little hole right here and that'll blow any debris out of the spark plug area. Okay, so now that that's done, um, I should be able to pop off. As long as it's you know cool enough, you should be able to pop this off. You want to, you're going to want to listen for leaks from there, the exhaust, and the intake, as well as the crankcase over there. So I'll get everything uh, ready to go. Show you how I um, plug it in. It's pretty easy. All you got to do is just pull the spark plug out with the five eighths and then you thread in your adapter tool and then you'll plug in the gauges into that and then you'll plug in your air supply which you don't want over 100 psi uh, plugged into your gauges and then once this is off here you take a breaker bar with a socket head on it and then just bring your cylinder up to top dead center and on the compression stroke and then you that way you can hold it still while you pressurize it okay so here's the other thing um, it's consuming oil and what you're supposed to do is just dip the dip, dipstick in and just let it rest there and then pull it out and it's cons I had it was full like I literally just changed the oil the other day there it is you can see it right there just past the end where it dries out it was full and so like I said you can see the puffs of smoke so definitely needs some attention I'm gonna get her taken care of before she uh, you know starts giving me some attitude <laughs> or maybe she's giving me attitude now by showing me the smoke and that's her indication of, you know what, I need a new piston, brother. So, just wanted to show you guys that real quick. All right, now we'll just pop out the, this is just a standard spark plug. And I've heard people say that some sockets are uh, too tight to fit down in there. Well, this fits in there just perfect. And it's just a regular spark plug removal socket. And I just unscrew it. I should have a rubber piece in here. That way it pulls the spark plug out, but it's not in there. I don't know what happened to it. Not sure where it went. So then I just take some needle nose pliers. Give it a squeeze and pull her out. And be careful with this thing. It's, uh, yeah, look at that. This is a $28 plug. And I think what my problem is with the restarting is that it's fouling. I think it's getting fouled out. I think it's getting too much oil. Or, I mean, I think it's getting, you know, it's burning oil. So we're about to see what's going on, that's for sure. All that. Okay, so to get these pieces in here, um, the one that actually came with the other test kit that I used, that Maddox, wasn't as long as this brass one on the right. Well, this brass one actually came with my compression tester kit and it reaches in there fine so it's good to see that this one's even longer because it's got a you know it, it only holds you know it seems like it's only in there by a few threads so this is good that's good to see that so you just put that on the end nice and snug okay then you get your gauge out i'm gonna go ahead and use a 10 millimeter to pop the cap off the crank case Okay, I'm going to bring the piston to top dead center on the compression stroke. Okay, so there's a little, when you're, you want to line a little dot, it's a punch mark on this gear here on the crank with that little arrow. Right there. And you can also you can barely see the top of the piston down there and the spark plug hole. 
Now if I move the crank, you can see the piston move. So that's top dead center right there. Let's see where our mark is. Oh, well, it's close. So we're close, and really you want it on either side of the top dead center. That way you can um, hold it, because if it's a top dead center, it's just going to kind of wander one way or the other anyways. Okay, so now we got our piss in the top dead center. I'm going to go ahead and thread in our adapter. And then we're going to attach our adapter to our gauges. And then get our air supply. Okay, so I set my pressure regulator to 100 PSI. It says to calibrate the gauge by turning the regulator knob clockwise until the needle on the right hand gauge reaches zero at the end of yellow set band. Unplugged. Typically this is between 15 and 20 PSI. Okay, it's looking at like 28 PSI. So that's only 5% right there. That's kind of sound like it's more than the other day, that's for sure. So that's pretty much how you test it. <laughs>